Okay. Uh, over the last uh, few uh, weeks, we've had a, a number of inquiries from people uh, through the identification assistant and the preview assistant service on our site. Uh, people wanting to know about the objects in this sale. Uh, it's being conducted at Charlotte's down in uh, Florida. Uh, the collection of Sir Charles Stewart Addis, Asian art. Uh, and just forget it, <laughs> they're all copies. Uh, so, and I'm gonna go through a little bit of this. I'm not gonna, this isn't gonna be a long video, but I want people to understand. Um, the first thing is that Charles Stewart Addis um, was a very prominent British guy. He was real. Uh, he was involved in banking in Hong Kong and later in the Philippines, represented the Bank of England. Long history, a uh, very prominent British family. Uh, his son, John Addis, Sir John Addis, who's, who's, who's the uh, younger fellow in this picture, is Charles' son, who was a collector, and his entire collection of Ming and Yuan wares, um, which is only the only thing he was known to have collected ever, um, uh, was gifted to the British Museum. And you may, may remember earlier this week, we did a video about the Butler collection being auctioned at Christie's in Hong Kong, and he specifically mentions um, uh, Sir John Addis, who was his friend, um, who got him, who was one of the people who encouraged him to go into collecting. All right, you may remember this clip from the video. The great collector, Sir John Addis, who gave a wonderful collection of 15th century work to the British Museum, visited my house in Geneva. He said to his companion, uh, you know, these late things, they're really quite good because he was only interested in the 15th century. Okay, and that's and that's who who the fellow is on the on the right here. That's uh, um, let's see, uh, we'll get a better look at him. Here we go. Blow this up. Okay, Th this is father and son. He was not a collector. He was a collector only of Yuan and Ming wares. So what they what this auction house has done is they've plucked a, they've plucked into their sale a bunch of reproductions of uh, uh, Qing wares and um, uh, attributed them to Sir Charles Addis. Um, which is um, absolutely untrue because he was not a collector. They've, they've included his biography and all this other stuff, and there's a bunch of pieces. Here's a, a really blatant fake. Uh, this isn't even a good fake. It's a very, very bad fake. Um, a yellow Chin Lung four character mark and all that, uh, but the colors are wrong. Um, it's just so, so fresh and so crisp and so ridiculous. Um, that it was probably made sometime during the last, uh, you know, five years or so, five or ten years, uh, I'm going to bet. It's also an enormous vase. It's, it's, it's uh, over two feet tall, which is, which is almost unheard of in this style of porcelain to begin with. Um, and were it coming to market, it would, and it were authentic, it would, it would be, would be wall-to-wall -wall news on, in the Asian art community. And of course, it hasn't been. And then they have a copy of this, one of the old, one of the most popular of all the fakes that are made today. These are mass-produced in China. They're beautifully made. They're nicely decorated, and these are all modern. And they're based on a very famous type of porcelain that was produced during the Qinlong period. But this is a blatant copy. And uh, if you if you really want to satisfy yourself, just take a look at the bottom of it fresh crisp clean perfect uh, that this paste that they use these days is right there um, and then they've gone to the trouble of having these little stickers printed Charles Stewart Addis number 159 and then they've taken a red magic marker and written in these these uh, silly like look they're supposed to look like museum or collection numbers old collection numbers uh, except this was done I'm going to I'm going to bet with with a uh, permanent marker of some time that is about as old as the shoes you have on your feet. All right, so that that's what's going on here. This thing has gotten three bids, unbelievably. Um, uh, as 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 the man once said, uh, you know, there's one born every minute, um, and most of these are going to sell to uh, unfortunate collectors in China who are going to find out they bought a fake after it gets there, and there's nothing they can do about it, and they'll just eat it. The other thing that he's got in this sale to, to round out the sh chicanery is this. Um, he's got a painting in here. Um, uh, uh, for example, here you have one signed by uh, a painting allegedly by um, Cheng Dai Shen. All right, and they threw in this guy's uh, just, I don't know, they don't say anything in the description about it. They just say Wang Hui Cheng. Um, he was a Chinese general, he died in the 1950s. Pretty well known guy in, the, in, in Chinese uh, Republic. Uh, creation of the Republic period and all that business. But you'll notice that down here, he doesn't include any more about this general's biography or make the claim 
that the painting belonged to him. He's just including it so you can draw your own inference from it that, oh, this is from a Chinese general. Um, as you all know, if you've been collecting for any length of time, this, this um, uh, Hai Qing died in Beijing, I believe. It was Be Beijing or Shanghai. I think it was Beijing. And, uh, of course, he died in 1953 after the communists took over. And uh, I don't think anybody was bringing porcelain out of China um, during the communist period. It was banned immediately. Um, there was no trade. There was no exportation of art. It's still illegal to export imperial art out of China. If you're, if you're dealing with somebody, of course, on, on eBay or someplace and they're putting up imperial wares, um, you know it has to be a fake because it's, they're not allowed. To, you get caught trying to export imperial marketing. You know, Mark and period and, and what they are classified as Chinese treasures, um, you'll go to prison for it if, or worse. All right. And uh, here he has a double gourd porcelain vase that he's included. And he's got this um, uh, some sort of uh, paper over here um, that's indicating that this is this is an old inventory or purchase form for this vase. This vase is brand new. Brand new, brand new, brand new. Uh, the colors are wrong. The drawing is wrong. There's just so much wrong with this vase. It's unbelievable. It's very, very pretty, but it is a total fake and a total fraud. So this is just to finish up. This is the Charlotte sale that's taking place. If you have bids on this auction, cancel them. Get them off of there. Um, um, nothing in his, I've not seen anything in his sales that are authentic that I can think of. He may once in a while have a few China trade pieces or export pieces that are okay. Uh, but from what I can tell, um, none of his, nothing in this sale is authentic, not one piece. And, uh, I'm, this is just a warning. Uh, don't talk yourself into it. Um, it's a fake. Do not bid and do not leave any bids. If you have bids up there, go in and retract them and get them off of this site. Save yourself heartache, save yourself shipping costs, save yourself headaches, and save yourself hours of fighting on the phone because you're not, it's not going to get you anywhere if you pay for it with a credit card. Okay. Once you pay for it, you own it. That's it. And uh, um, of course, this fellow will be glad to take your money. The auction is on November 29th. It's in a few days. There's four days left. You have plenty of time to go in and, 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 and get, get the uh, bids canceled if you have any. And I would urge you to do it. All right. We'll be back later with the uh, regular weekly video or maybe up by the time this goes up. I'm not sure yet. But uh, have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. And uh, we go on from here. Okay. Bye-bye.